the presentation about the brown man's burden. Um, me, uh, Helena and Gustavo have the question to compare the brown man's burden with the white man's burden. And um, the white man's burden and the brown man's burden is both poems. All stanzas in the two poems starting with uh, these two quotes. Um, and in the white man's burden, uh, take up the white man's burden, and in the brown man's burden, pile on the brown man's burden. There is seven stanzas in the white man's burden, and there is eight uh, in the brown man's burden. The stanzas ends in the same way, just seen at different angles, depend on whether it's white or brown. Henry du Prilichy has uh, interpreted and translated the white man's burden to the uh, brown advantage. And now I want to tell you about the white man's burden. In February 1899, British novelist and poet Roger Kipling wrote a poem uh, named The White Man's Burden. It was published in McClure magazine and it's one of Kipling's infamous poem. The poem presents a European view of the world where none European cultures are seen as childlike and extremely cruel. His view presses uh, the white people as a result um, have an obligation to rule and encourage the cultural development um, of people from different cultural backgrounds. The white people should only rule until the non-whites can completely learn how to live their lives under the western ways. The term, the white man's burden, can be taken to be racist. Other may say it is a disrespectful team um, to categorize uh, everyone who is not European, though their cultural, cultural and economic status. Uh, Kipling's poem also can be uh, viewed as, um, as that be rich have a moral duty and obligation to help the poor better themselves whether the poor want to help or not. And now I want to tell you something about the black man's burden. Um, the black man's burden is written in 1999 by English political and writer and publisher named Henry Dupri Labouche. It presents a heartful outcome of imperialism critical impact on Africa. His view presents how the European attempt to impale his culture throughout the world, though their intentions were good within the European eyes, but fell in the end and destroyed Africa and the natives. The Africans suffered thermodously, uh, and in this response he describes how the abuse had fatal consequences and how they are permanently damaged within themselves. It was poisoned not only their bodies, but also their souls. This is a very strong piece and brings one to see the hardship the Africans had to go through and what was done to them. Their tradition and cultures were ruined and they were forced to practice uh, the lifestyle of the European imperialists and this slowly began to kill the Africans. One can compare the difference in the point of views of each writer. In the white man's burden, the view the writer had is that uh, imperialism and colonization was an effective way for the non-Europeans in the United States to live a decent life. And, um, and now I want to compare two stanzas from the two poems. I've chosen the first stanza in each poem because it gives a good context and at first I will read them and then I will compare them. The first poem, The White Man's Burden. Take up the white man's burden, send for the best you breed, go bind your sons to exile, exile, to serve your captives lead, to wait in heavy harness, unfluttered folk and wild, your new couch shall in peoples, half devil and half child. And so the second poem, The Brown Man's Burden, pile on the brown man's burden, to gravity your greed, to clear away the niggers who progress would impede. Be very stern for truly, tis useless to be mild, with new cowed solemn peoples, half devil and half child. 
The brown man's burden is a response to the white man's burden. They have translated the brown man's burden as the point of view matches the white. The brown man's burden is a critic of the white man's burden. And if you read the second line in the first poem, the white man's burden, send forth the best you breed. It's like to send out your best son. And if you go down and um, read the second line in the second poem, the brown man's burden, to gravity you greed. It's like it responds to each other. And if you read the third line in the first poem, go bind your sons to a chill. It's like to serve in other ways, and it responds in the brown man's burden, go clear away the niggers. And uh, you will notice that the archer for the brown man's burden used quite a few of the same phrases that Kipling used in the white man's burden, but turns them against Kipling's message to argue uh, that British and American racism and imperialism is evil and hypocritical.